Welcome to the Invincible Innovation Show, the podcast for changemakers. Each week, I talk to the most fascinating entrepreneurs and innovation leaders about innovation, strategy, and design. Hey, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about making career changes and is it right for you? I think it's going to be really interesting. Welcome to Invincible Innovation Live Show. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm Adima Zokalio, Product Innovation and Value Creation Expert, and I'll be your host. And today I have a very special guest. Hi, Jean. Hi. Jean Thank Retief. you for having me. <laughs> yeah, so my guest is Jean Retief, and she's the author of the Figgy Life blog and founder of Figgy Beauty. Thank you for being with me. And we're live on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook, and you're so invited to join the discussion and ask questions. And now we can start. Could you tell us a bit about the change that you've been doing in your career and how did you know it if it was the right move for you? Yeah. Gosh, you know, I've been thinking about this question and mm-hmm. I could give I, I could give the the answer that I think most people would want to know, which is like, oh, you just know and it's a feeling and you you know listen to your guts and all that nonsense, but that's not the truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is the truth? For me, you know, deciding to make this career change was brutal. It was excruciatingly difficult. It was terrifying. Uh, it was really like a breaking apart and coming back together. I think my situation was maybe a little different because I wasn't coming from a space where I hated my job and I didn't want to go to my job. I, I fought tooth and nail for this consultancy. Nobody believed in it. And it was such a success for 13 years. We did so many amazing things. So it felt like my, my, my baby, you know. And I've never been the type of person that's like a career adventurist. I, once I'm committed to something, I completely commit. And that's me. That's it for yeah. easily the rest of my life. So coming to a, a decision... And realizing that I had to make a change was really difficult for me to do because I was dealing with a lot of things. I was dealing with, first of all, the sense of failure. Did I, did I fail? Um, and that's why I have to make this change. What's wrong with me? Why am I all of a sudden in this stage of my life so deeply, deeply unhappy and deeply unfulfilled? Um, It's also the stage of your life where your kids are toddlers, there are school fees, there's a house payment. Um, you know, you're contributing to the financials of the household. So all of these things came together. And, you know, it was this amalgamation of, of, of all of these things, of all of these tornadoes, the storm. And I had to make a decision to see If this is really where I still needed to be, because I felt with Calibrix I wasn't achieving or I wasn't doing what I set out to do anymore in the beginning. And I had health issues. I, I was diagnosed with panic disorder, which had grown significantly worse. And um, I had to sit down and get honest with myself and ask myself if this is really still where I wanted to be. Um, and that's how I decided, but it was not an easy decision and it was yeah. not overnight. It was really, really difficult. C- could you tell us what you've done before and what is the change after? So what did you move from? Yeah, I was a human rights consultant. So my PhD is in international criminal law and international human rights law. So, uh, my consultancy, um, we developed, um, human rights projects and human rights programs in various countries. We also um, did a lot of crisis management um, when that was called upon project management, team management, and we helped NPOs a lot in terms of managing their finances, getting funding, mm. making their programs a success. So yeah. that so, is really so we- my... It's now even more surprising because most people would say, okay, I'm looking for something with meaning that would contribute to the world. And you already had that, uh, that aspect, right? Yeah, that's true. But you know what came with that and I didn't realize is a extremely taxing emotional job. 
Um, and I had my own personal background, which I think led me to human rights um, with a lot of things that I didn't deal with personally. And it came back to haunt me, you know. Mm. So dealing with people's raw emotions like that on a daily basis, seeing the things that you do, um, the excruciating travel schedule, you're always on a plane, you're always sleeping in some dingy place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just it, it got to be too much. And unfortunately, with all of the politics surrounding human rights and the bureaucracy and the red tape, you know, you're so stuck in that bubble that you never get out of it to try and actually help the people that need the help. Yeah. So, you know, I needed to make a choice. Was I going to still fight this battle or were, was I going to use my background and what I had and employ it in a different way where I felt I could make more of an impact and more of a change? So it's even more what you're describing right now because it's your PhD is in that specific profession. Yeah. And and it's it's a really hard decision. And today, tell us what you're doing today. So what the change is. Yeah, so I basically founded Figgy. Um, Figgy is, a, is a, a blog and a podcast and a, a lifestyle brand with a skincare line. Um but Figgy is really and was born and is meant for every woman like me. That's in this stage of your life and you just feel something isn't working, but you don't have any place where you can say it. You can't say it in, at work because then you will be seen to be weak. You can't say you have issues like panic disorder because you're just stressed. Everybody else can handle stress. Get on the train. You can do it too. You know, um, you're so scared of judgment. You're so scared of failure. You have nowhere to go where they don't tell you, oh, be positive. Just believe yourself into a better space. Just think everything better. No, Figgy is for everybody like me who has struggled and achieved and is still looking for some kind of personal and professional purpose, but where they want to go to say, you know what? It's okay not to be okay. I'm not okay. Life sucks at the moment. Everything terrifies me. And I just want a space where I can be real. Yeah. So how did you come from this very specific position to something which is like, first, it's outside of the system. It's self-employed. It's being your own business. It's doing something which is more like a lifestyle, which is very different than human rights. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like the other side of just thinking about like lifestyle. And, and it's like the other side of what we are thinking about when you're thinking about human rights and who are we dealing with and how did you make that? Yeah, it, I mean, for me, it was actually quite a natural shift, uh, but I can understand from the outside, it looks like day and night, you know, Yeah. but I did a lot of, uh, as part of my consultancy in Calibrix, I did a lot of mentorship. So um, I was basically taking that package that I had developed for over a decade and putting it into a space where I had more control over the message and how it gets to the people who need it. And I wasn't constantly being halted by all of these third parties and elements telling me what I can't and can't do. And, you know, so for me, that was kind of the natural progression. And in terms of lifestyle and it being more of an inner work that was also my natural progression from having to to sit down and get really open and honest with the issues I didn't deal with in in my life you know um, my childhood sexual abuse um, really difficult family relationships uh, my panic disorder and how that's affected my life and my career um, and I talk about all of these things very <laughs> very openly and extremely honestly on Figgy. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it was a natural progression if you look at it that way. But from the outside, I can understand it. It looks completely yeah, different. Not, not. And do you think that there is some kind of stage? What what would make some... We have many people, I think that about 80% of people, I have read the research, are not pleased with their position in their work. They're not pleased. It, it could be maybe they want to be somewhere else. Maybe they're not please with their boss, whatever, and they're not doing any changes. And do you think that there is some kind of a stage or an opportunity that you know that right now is, is a better time for me to deal with, with this 
and change is hard. So I need the energy to do so. Yeah, I think that's for me kind of a two lane answer. First is there's a difference between being completely, uh, there's a difference between absolutely knowing an unhappiness within yourself that you need to change and having an unhappiness with an outside event. Like, for example, you're unhappy in your job, you want to change your job. That's two completely different things, you know. And I think we evolve as we grow older, we learn more about responsibilities and the consequences that come with that and it changes our mind a little bit of the world's view and how we see our careers um but in terms of stages i don't think there is any one stage where it's easier to make this kind of decision because if you think about it you're always facing some kind of challenge when you're just starting out um you're challenged because usually you can't find work because you need experience but you need an opportunity to get experience in order to show experience. So it's very challenging. Then when you progress to the next level, you want to earn a higher salary. But it's so difficult because every job you apply for look at your, looks at your previous salary and says, oh, no, OK, I'm not going to give you that much of an increase. So that's a challenge. And then you move on to the next part of your life where you may be wanting to start a family. And then that whole thing comes into play. OK, do I want to be a career mom? Do I want to be stay at home mom am I making that decision now taking time off and um in my career now or am I doing it later and you have bills to pay <coughs> excuse me so there's never a good stage I think to do it every stage has its own challenges that's that's the way mm -hmm. I see it and do you think it's different between men and women because when we're talking about motherhood and stay-at-home moms I think that it's more of a woman issue in that. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I've been crucified for this view a lot um, because I, I really honestly believe that the world is changing and um, I am very, very lucky to have a very good support system in my husband. But even in my professional career, I've worked with amazing men that have given me unbelievable opportunities and understanding and um, leeway when I needed it. So I really think it depends on your specific situation, but I don't think we're in a stage in life where we have to let us, that define us anymore. We do have more opportunities to make it happen for ourselves. If we stop kind of confining us to these thoughts that it's so much more difficult and it's so much different because we're women, it is different. It always will be. Um, just as there are certain things that will be different for men, but we have the tools to navigate that now. We just need to use them correctly and communicate that correctly um, and, and use it to our benefit uh, if we can. So if we're taking that, I would ask another question. Do you think that women could have it all? Career, family, love? Could that be? You know, I would say that we should stop asking ourselves if we want it all, because what is all? What, what does that definition mean to you? Because all to me, if I think about it, is extremely overwhelming. It's juggling a thousand things. It's trying to make everything work at once and me missing out 90% of my life because I'm always focusing on something else. So what does all mean? What? How do you define all? Is that you know, 2.5 kids, a happy family, a certain paycheck, you need to define that for yourself. And then if you're clear on that definition, yes, I think you can do it. Just know that, you know, life is always changing. Life always, always happens. There will always be times where it's harder to commit to certain things than it is to commit to other things. There will always be certain challenges you need to face. And if you're okay with that and you have a clear definition of what your all is and looks like, then I think it is possible. Yeah, we have a question and I'll read it. I agree with you that every career stage has its own challenges, yet don't we become more experienced, wiser and more relaxed when we reach a senior and leadership stage? What do you think? I have an answer, but I would love to see what you're, you're saying. <laughs> so... Uh... 
<clears throat> first, let me just apologize. I, I'm so sorry. I've had the worst luck. I've had COVID and I was okay for two days and then I got swine flu. So this is the, <laughs> the voice. And no, the it's just I'm fine. so sorry about that. Please no, forgive me. Um, uh, okay. So let me just read this again because I had the... <laughs> I, I, I would say what I think and you, you'd think about your answer after it. Okay, no I, problem. I think that most people think that once we become older, wiser, more senior, have a better um, role in leadership, it seems like we need to be more relaxed and less eager to prove ourselves. Uh, from what I know and from my own experience, I don't think that you get to a stage if you don't have this inner um, stability. You don't get to a stage and then you say, okay, now I, I'm here. I got here. Now it's all perfect. I got what I want. I think that we're driven to the point that we always need to prove ourselves more. And whatever we yeah. get is just not enough because we could always get something which is better, right? And it, yeah. it's not only related to career, is the way that you see your life, is the way that you see your financial achievements, is the way that you see whatever you get. It's like, yeah, there's always more. And are you really content? This is related to what you're saying about all. What is all? So this yeah. is how I see it. Yeah, that I, I completely agree. That's an amazing way to see it also. And, you know, we have to ask ourselves if you're at a stage where you feel more relaxed and uh, um, you're in a more senior position and you feel wiser you know we also have to remind ourselves that it doesn't really matter what we achieve or where we are or what kind of experience we have we can always grow and we really always should it's when we stop reminding ourselves to grow that we stagnate you know and for sure in my for example my example now I definitely would not have been able to start Figgy 10 years ago I am for sure at a very at a much bigger advantage in doing this because of the amount of experience that I have uh, um, been able to build up over the past 10 years in relationships and project management in international law but <laughs> it's still terrifying I am even as I sit here before I came onto this meeting I was dealing with a crisis and I am terrified I'm terrified of making a mistake. I'm terrified of being in this new industry. It's extremely intimidating and it always will be and it should be because that's how we learn and that's how we push ourselves to to be better and to to do more, you know. So, yeah, you do get experience and you do get wiser, but for me personally, I don't think I get more relaxed in, in, in a senior. I I may I may actually get a little more stressed. <laughs> Why do you think it's more stress? I, I could understand when, if you're not relaxed, but because you need to prove more. I think, especially when you make such a significant change, like I like I just did, you know, you have a lot of pressure to make mm -hmm. it work because yeah. I have taken away a big chunk of my family's finances, monthly finances, in order to pursue this. Um, I have gone into something completely new. I, I studied cosmetic chemistry, which is something completely different. And it, there is a very good chance that I may fail or this may not work or um, something may go wrong. A, a lot is riding on this and that's just the reality. So, you know, those type of things will, will always stress us out and it will always at least make us doubt ourselves, even if it's yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. You know, when I think about um, what we call a change or a crisis is a really fast and, and big change for us. But in general, when we think about change, it's like it's sometimes overwhelming and it's really yeah. hard to do. And most people would try to avoid it as much as they can, if they could. Um, and I think it's it's a way for us to understand that this is how we're flowing with life and we're not against life and not against what's going on in our life. And sometimes, yeah, it means that we need to have these decisions of, yeah, I, I'm going to work about, I know most of the time that I'm awake, I'm, I'm at work and, and I need to figure out if this is what really I want to do. If this is what I see my life 
as like when I envision my life in the future, when I go back and see my life when I'm 80 and I want to see my life, is it exactly what I want it to be? Mm-hmm. Is it like closer to that or not? And yeah. it's intimidating just to think about like, so I don't have to go with this specific route that was paved for me. Like yeah. I went to university, I got this role, now I'm in this position. I already have this experience. Why would I do something different? Like, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and it's a big question. Most people would say, I have a stable job. I have my salary. I know what I'm worth. I'm not going to like um, endanger my self-worth with something that I might make mistakes and, and fail. So I'm yeah. staying here. And, and more or less, you see people staying in the same position, even if it's boring for them. By the way, if you're in leadership position, sometimes you're bored. It means that you're more or less in the same role or in the same domain for so many years, and it's not that challenging. So yeah. sometimes this is what happens. And you see people staying in this stagnatic situation, not trying to do anything else. You know, they're going to work. We have lots of traffic in, in Israel. I don't know if you have that, but yeah. we have lots of traffic. So you have traffic in the, mor- in the morning. You have work. You're coming back in traffic, more or less some kind, some kind of errands and going to see Netflix, more or less. And then, you know, yeah. again and again each day. And, and, and I think that most people would say it's enough for them. Yeah. They, they don't strive to and have anything okay. else. If, if that is enough for you, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But if, if you're clearly unhappy, then you have to be brave enough to make the change, yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, I, t- I totally understand. So why do you think that balance in life is a myth? Oh, my gosh, my dear friend, balance. Oh, we've had some really bad times together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you know, the thing about balance is, And the thing that frustrates me about this is that the conversation in society is so geared towards balance. You have to have a balanced life. And, and then when everybody started realizing that it's really difficult to balance all things, they started changing the conversation, especially for women, saying, oh, no, you can have everything, just not at the same time. So it's still, I'm, I'm tricking you into thinking it is still balanced, but you can have everything at the same time. Yeah. And the, the problem with that is that we spend so much time and energy and stress chasing balance. It's actually ironic because we want balance to be more calm and in a more better space and more mindful, but we spend all of our energy trying to chase balance and we don't achieve it. And we never will because to me, balance doesn't exist. Life always happens. You, <laughs> I mean, maybe the listeners' lives may be different than mine, but my life does not have a roadmap. I mean, things come at me when I least expect it in sometimes the best ways and sometimes the most horrible ways. And that will keep on happening because that is the journey of life. That's the whole existence of life. It always has an ebb. It always has a flow. It always has a yin and a yang. So... The best that you can do is to strap into life's roller coaster and do the absolute best that you can do at the stage where you're at. If you're at the top, just do your best in that moment. If you're on your way down, plummeting towards the ground, take it as it comes and just try and do your best and just yeah. flow through the motions like that. There will always be times where... I am a lot more uh, um, under pressure and I have to put in a lot more hours at work. But if I communicate that to my family and say, listen, this week is going to be really tough. If you can take over dinners for me and if you can do the school run next week, you know, we change it around and, and I'm on the school run again and I'm giving hugs and kisses and quality time. And you get to to ebb and flow that, you know, like one day you'll be up, one day you'll be down. And if we can just try our best to ride that wave i know it's horribly difficult sometimes yeah. it just takes a lot of stress out of it you know um rather than trying to chase this perfect ideal that doesn't yeah. serve us in the end but that's yeah. just my opinion <laughs> yeah I, i think that i understand what you're saying is like we are investing so much energy in this 
concept of being balanced, like in life, in our health, in our work, in, in our uh, uh, work-life balance, the, all of that. Yeah. Sometimes we're trying to control things and there is so much energy in trying to control the circumstances and trying to control ourselves and to, to control everything. And instead of like going with the flow is, is what you mentioned, we're, we're just so focused on the effort of balance. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. it's difficult to go with the flow. I find it super difficult. I love control. I have to be in control. But yeah. it helps me to think if I'm in that moment to just continuously remind myself, just do your best where you are right now. What's the best yeah. you can do right now? And just go with that. Yeah. I think it's related maybe to to self-empathy, to, to yes. understand that we're doing, our, everybody's doing their best. And although it doesn't look to us like that way, but everybody's doing whatever they can in order to balance their life and in order yeah. to make it better. And, and just to understand that we cannot control everything, not our internal feelings and thoughts and, and the way that we behave and not surely not the external ones. And whatever we're doing, we're like, we're doing our best, you know, like I, I it's not related, but I have to tell you, like I had a discussion with my kid at the, at the morning and he said something and then instead of like being so motherly and say and he's a teenager teenager yeah so instead of like saying yeah you're right it's so hard you cannot do it like you being so motherly i was so like stressed and told him like why are we discussing this again you know <laughs> <laughs> and it's like yeah it's like I, i'm trying to control this situation and, and and i cannot let's say the truth and for me, it's like like trying to resist the fact that currently I cannot do anything and you cannot do anything. And we're like helpless in this situation and it's okay. And instead yeah. of saying that it's okay, I try to fix it and manage it and to control it. And it doesn't yeah. really work, right? Yeah, Being it stresses thing. you out even more. You're actually... <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think that there is a really good book. I, I'm not sure that I remember the name. Like, I think it's called The the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck or something yes, like that. Yes, yes, you know I've it? read it. I've it's read really it. good. And it's yeah, related it's to good. that. It's related to the fact that people are invested so much energy in just yeah. trying to be, you know, this career person and being thin and doing the exercise and eating well and doing like everything is like needs yeah. to be this way. And then instead of getting the result that they really want and what they want, they want to be content and, and, and I know happy is the right word, but content and, and relaxed in their life. Yeah. But instead of doing that, they're so intense in doing what they need to do in order to be relaxed. Yeah, no, for sure. It's, it's a vicious circle. <laughs> yeah. It just keeps on spinning. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of one of my teachers and she wanted to go to this workshop i think it was a yoga workshop or meditation i don't remember and she was like what she woke up at, a bit like too too late and she was so stressed and she shouted at her kids and everyone at, at home just to get there to this yoga retreat or whatever <laughs> and only on the way she understood that she did it just only when she got to the car, she understood that she just shouted all around in her house in order to get okay. to this retreat. <laughs> but we do that. We do that. We put so much energy and focus. I mean, I remember after I had my baby, I really had severe body issues. And um, <clears throat> I was extremely, I think, like many new moms, focused on like losing this last Sure. few kilos go, go, and they yeah, just we'll would work. not go away <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know and you go on this diet and every friend and a family friend has that kind of uh, advice that you haven't tried or the secret trick or or tip or whatever and yeah. and then eventually I just gave up like I ate that piece of chocolate cake when I wanted to I indulged in pasta when I wanted to and when I stopped focusing on it so much it just naturally started to happen because I think I was just investing so much energy into this and you know it, it I was actually almost stopping myself from achieving that goal yeah and, and I think that sometimes we we're trying to imagine how it should be and there is like imagination and there is like real life you know 
we yes. imagine we should go back to ourselves like we have this in in israel you know we have lots of kids in israel so we have lots of pregnancies and going back to <laughs> before the pregnancy and and there is this notion of going back to the genes the genes you were okay uh, before you had like you go you got pregnant oh yes before you had your pregnancy genes <laughs> yeah the genes and, and and just thinking about it like as a as a, an idea you know that we have to be a teenager or a 20 years old when you're 35 why would you yeah. like it's not natural you're not yeah. 20 you're 35 this is how old you are yes and we're just going back like trying to go back to this genes that okay if i was i was 20 <laughs> that's what yeah. i was and, and it's 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 related to to the next thing that i want to ask you is about self-acceptance and how do you see it oh self-acceptance i think is a really deep inner journey because again you have to define what self-acceptance looks like to you like what is it that you are exactly struggling with you know for me personally I had a really hard time with self-love and self-kindness and I am the least assertive person you will ever meet so I I had a lot of things that I need to work on in terms of being more respectfully assertive setting better boundaries those are the things that define self-acceptance to me but also, um, I think whatever makes you feel good in the morning when you get out of bed and say, yeah, I'm happy with myself. I'm, I'm happy with the jeans I'm wearing and I'm happy with the routine I have today and I'm happy with the food I'm eating and I'm happy with the career I'm going to. All of that to me culminates into self-acceptance. But it has these different facets that all have to come together and that's something you have to sort out for yourself because we all struggle with different things. Yeah. You know, when we're just, when we just had this discussion, I like in my head, most people would say that most of my podcast is about, you know, technology, career, uh, business, right. And what we're talking about is so personal. And yeah. as I see it, it's like interwined. You cannot really like, this is me in my career, in my business. And this is me in my, personal life here I, I express feelings and I think about self acceptance but I don't think it's like the same thing how do you achieve the point that you're content with yourself as a businesswoman as a career uh, person how do you relate to your business as it's part of me right most people exactly. when they go to work or, to, or in their profession or their role or what is written on their card right this yeah. is them so it's related directly to how do I accept myself? How do I see myself? Would I see myself the same if I didn't have this title? Exactly. Right? And that's exactly why um, I felt this real need to bring about Figgy. Because um, in my years in, in, in my consultancy and working with teams and everything, I, I, I really saw this challenge that especially women were extremely afraid to voice their honesties in a professional environment because it's seen as fluff and the things we don't talk about and um, the things you just deal with. But the problem is whatever is happening in your personal life will in some way translate into your professional life. And whatever is happening in your professional life, for example, if you're really unhappy at work, is going to translate to your home life and the people that you share your space with there are the ones that are going to suffer because of it, because you're bringing that home with you. So, um, you know, and that's what Figgy is about saying that it isn't fluff. It isn't something that we shouldn't talk about or we shouldn't say for fear of not getting the promotion or being seen as somebody that talks about too many personal stuff at work. No, it's just part of life. And I think especially after COVID people have begun to realize that more it's, it's intertwined your entire life, basically 80% of your life you spend at work. So it's only natural to think that your personal and your professional life are going to intertwine. How do you see the, the change during or after the, the COVID crisis? How do you see people changing and doing more decisions to make change in their career 
we know about people leaving their jobs and the virtual resignation and all that. Yeah. How do you see that? Um, I think that during COVID for me, I saw a big change in mindfulness and people being a lot more willing to be in a space of thinking about what is really important to them, how they want to live their lives. Where I am at and the people that I deal with now, where we are post-COVID and everything is going a little bit more back to normal, I actually see, um, for me, an increase in stress even uh, more than it was pre-COVID because it's like people just not even hit the ground running. They just like flew <laughs> into, into that lane again of, okay, everything is working again. Everything is working again. We have to... make money again we have to get in uh, you know we have to get all our contacts going again we have to get meetings going again and and all of this mindfulness and and everything that they that they celebrated during covid kind of flew out the window for for you know <coughs> many times for good reason i mean you have families to support you have many things going on right so uh, for me post covid and the changes that i've seen post covid isn't really that significant during covet yes but now where everything has gone back to normal I feel like the the rat race is even faster and there's even more competition and there's even more stress and strain to getting that goal and getting the sales and making it work yeah I see and do you think like what we're ta talking about is going from a specific system or an organization going outside to building your own you brand or your own business but what would you tell people who are inside a, a company and they're having these like thoughts about change what it, like it could be within the organization it could be outside it, it's like opening yeah. something else going to a new career path or to a new role what what Look, do you think changing a career is not for everybody just like entrepreneurship is not for everybody just like being a doctor isn't for everybody and You know, you have to ask yourself really the difficult, tough questions. Do you really want to change a career and start your own thing? Or are you just unhappy with where you are at? And if you are unhappy there, is there something you can do to change that? Can you speak up? Can you make your position or your situation better for yourself? And a lot of times when you ask these things, people will tell you, oh, no, I'm, I don't really hate where I work. Like, I love the company values and I love the morals and I... I love like my um, uh, my working hours. It's just that these things bother me. So maybe I would say to first look at that, what exactly is it that you're unhappy with and why do you want to make the change? And when you're clear on that, then you can say, okay, I know and I understand I definitely do not want to be here because of A, B, and C. Is there something that I can do to move away from this? Yes, I can start my own thing. No, my own thing is not something that I want to commit to, but I can look for other opportunities. Um, that would be my advice because it also doesn't help to make big changes in your life that are going to end up causing you more heartache and more stress and more disappointment. If you're going to commit to something like this, make sure you do it right and you invest the time and the energy. That you should in making the right choice yeah I totally agree that the being a, a business owner is not for everyone else and most people are not their employees most people are not a business owner yeah. or as um, somebody who is like self-employed or whatever and um, but I think that in many cases people are so afraid of the change that they even don't check the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Because they're afraid that this open door might put them in a position that is so uneasy in an uneasy situation that they just try to avoid it. And yeah. you see people that um, are stuck in an organization that you cannot change. There are so many circumstances that, that you cannot change because this is your position, this is what the other people are doing. You don't have other role that is open for you. Uh, especially if, if it's not a big organization and people would stay there and it's not like I'm not criticizing that I'm just questioning uh, what is the reason that they would would stay and I think that most people are looking for stability and they're trying to avoid change and therefore sometimes they're, they're not doing things even if they really really want to do it and they could do it like they, most people yeah. 
could do some kind of change and they're avoiding it. And, yeah, and but I think, think? The, the, fear, the fear there comes from the unknown. Nothing creates more stress than uncertainty and insecurity. People need security. And they, especially when it comes to finances and having a family to look after and you have bills to pay, bring in the element of the unknown and that stress just escalates to amazing levels, right? Which is understandable. It is understandable. Sure. I mean... It, it was the same for me. That's how that's why it took so long to make this decision to start Figgy and take a break from from Calibrix. And I'm sorry I did it that way. I feel like um, I could have done it better and I could have made the decision sooner. But I was terrified of the unknown. I was terrified of taking that financial cut. I was terrified of Starting, you know, when I started my consultancy, I didn't need to have a lot of startup capital because I was rendering services, which was based on my experience and my expertise and my knowledge. I didn't need to uh, mass produce products or um, uh, formulate samples and pay for these things. You know, all of a sudden I was not only just taking away finances from my family, I was actually investing finances into having to pay for all these things. And that's scary and terrifying. But I think the thing that really, really sucks about that is the only way you're going to know if it's going to work is if you're going to try. <laughs> yeah, so are sure. you going to take the leap or are you not going to take the leap? And either way, don't judge yourself. If mm -hmm. you feel like you do not have at this moment, um, the the mental like fortitude or the courage or the time or the commitment to do it, then don't don't force yourself to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna take the leap, then be all in. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you on that one. So so we're almost done. We we could talk for hours, I think. <laughs> But, but I would, would think, like, what would be your tip for people who are just having this question mark in front of them? What would be your tip when they're, they're, they're I think they need to get to a stage. It needs to be really, really hard in order for, for them to decide to move, move on. Um, what would be your tip to these people? My tip would be to feel it, feel the fear. Don't walk through it. Don't avoid it because, because you're avoiding the fear and the uncertainty. It's making you stop and think and not do. Feel the fear, confront it head on. Like, for example, write down for yourself, be the worst pessimist you know and put it in black and white. What is the worst thing that can happen if you take this chance or if you take this step? And make peace with that because that fear is what creates, you know, th everything else, the stress, the not doing it. So get real with that and feel it. And it, it, if, if it's something that's holding you back because it's something that you still need to sort out within yourself, what do you want? Where do you want to go? What is your purpose? Then get real with that. Face your own pain, face your own struggles we're always trying to avoid these things. And it's this avoidance that actually comes back to, sure. to be the greater problem. So, yeah, just feel it. Feel it yeah. and just look at it head on. Yeah. You know, like one of the things, I don't know if I told that in my podcast, but one of the things that I really love to do is to learn. And I always take some kind of a course or a session or something in the university each year. And last year I, I went and studied ACT, Acceptance and Commitment Therapy. Yes. And, yeah. yeah and, and it's like, you know, it's it was so interesting just to see that the fact that people are trying to avoid pain or confuse it, confusion, uncertainty, um, being hurt, this is something that is one, one of the, or maybe the main thing that makes their life so much harder. And sometimes you do need to allow yourself to be in that mess yeah. and to be in that pain in order to allow yourself to do something else. Because if yeah. not, the avoidance, it takes so much, it, it's such a big toll on your life and it's, it's so, much, so many resources in order yeah. not to feel 
uh, disappointed, not, not to feel sad, not, not to feel frightened. We're doing so much more. And yeah. sometimes we just need to let it be. And when we're allowing ourselves to be frightened and to be even overwhelmed, sometimes we could find ourselves on the other side after that. Yeah. But just to be clear, though, I mean, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible yeah. to go through that and it's horrible to face it. And it's terrifying to think of it. But uh, I don't know. It's like pulling off the Band-Aid, you know, it's it's worth it in the end. But yeah. it's not easy. <laughs> it's not. I totally agree. So it's been a pleasure to talk to you, Jean, you so and much. I really enjoyed it. So how could people hear, hear more about Figgy and, and what you're doing? Tell us. Um, so you can find us on the Figgy Life website, F-I-G-G-I life.com. And there you will also find the blog, the podcast, but you can also find us on all the social media networks, um, Instagram, Facebook. You can just uh, look for Figgy or Figgy Beauty and then you would be able to find us. Wow. Okay, I'm, I'm going to look for, for things for the beauty and then I'm going to check it out. <laughs> okay, so thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Jean, and having this open-hearted discussion is always like wonderful for me. I really enjoyed it, so thanks. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Sure, and to all of you changemakers out there, thank you for joining me. And if you learn, want to learn more about what I do, go to invincibleinnovation.com and I'll see you next week with another innovative, insightful talk. See ya. I'm Adima Zaukario, and you've been listening to the Invincible Innovation Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, invincibleinnovation.com, where you can learn more about our programs and my book, Innovating Through Chaos. I'll be waiting for you next week in our next episode. Thank you for listening.